talk briefly about depolarization on the left and the right because I think there's a technical problem that needs to be addressed. So here's what I've been thinking about. So the French intellectuals in particular just pulled off a sleight of hand and transformed Marxism into postmodern identity politics and like we've seen the consequence of that. It's not good. It's a de devolution into a kind of tribalism that's well that's going to th that will th that will tear us apart on the right and on the left and on the right. Like I, in my in my house, I have a very large collection of socialist realist paintings from the former Soviet Union, propaganda pieces, but also kind of, of of harsh impressionist pieces of working class people and so forth. And I collected them for a variety of reasons. Now, you could debate about the propriety of that, given the murderousness of those regimes. And fair enough, I have my reasons. But I don't have paintings from the Nazi area, era in my house. And I wouldn't. And that's been a puzzlement to me, because I regard the communist, the totalitarian communist regimes as just as murderous as the Nazi regimes. But there's an evil associated with the Nazi regime that seems more palpable, in some sense. So I've been thinking about that for a long time. And, and then I've been thinking about a, a corollary to that, uh, which is part of the problem with our current political debate. So, um, on the right, I think we've identified markers for people who've gone too far in their ideological presuppositions. And it looks to me like the marker we've identified is racial superiority. And I think we've known that probably since the end of World War II, but we saw a pretty good example of it in the 1960s with William Buckley. Because Buckley, when he put out his, his conservative magazine, um, the David Duke type types kind of attached themselves to it. And he said, no, here's the boundary. You guys are on the wrong side of the boundary. I'm not with you. And Ben Shapiro recently did this, for, for example, as well, in the aftermath of the Charlottesville incident. So, the, so what's interesting is that on the conservative side of the spectrum, We've figured out how to box in the radicals and say, no, you're outside the domain of acceptable opinion. Now, here's the issue. We know that things can go far, too far on the right. And we know that things can go too far on the left. But we don't know what the markers are for going too far on the left. And I would say that it's ethically incumbent on those who are liberal or left-leaning to identify the markers of pathological um, extremism on the left and to distinguish themselves from the people who hold those pathological viewpoints. And I don't see that that's being done. And I, I think that's a, that's a colossal ethical failure and it, it may doom the liberal left project. Like The lefties have their point. They're, they're driven fundamentally by a horror of inequality and the catastrophes that inequality produces. And fair enough, because inequality is a massive social force and it does produce, it can produce catastrophic consequences. So to be concerned about that politically is reasonable. But we do know that that concern can go too far. Okay, so I've suggested that there's a triumvirate of concepts that bear the same, that, what would you say, have the same potentially catastrophic outcomes when implemented as the racial superiority doctrines. Diversity, inclusivity, and equity as a triumvirate. Even though you can have an intelligent conversation about two of those anyways. But I would say that of the three, equity is the most unacceptable. The doctrine of equality of outcome. And it seems to me that that's where people who are thoughtful on the left should draw the line. Say, no, equality of opportunity, not only fair enough, but laudable. But equality of outcome? It's like, nope, you've, you've crossed the line. We're not going there with you. Now, maybe that's wrong. Maybe it's not equity. That's my candidate for it. But it is definitely the case that you can go too far on the left, and it's definitely the case that we don't know where to draw the line. And that's a big problem. Which identities? That's the intersectional problem, right? The, the radical leftists have already hit the problem of intersectionality. It's like, well, we've got race and gender, let's say. Well, okay, what about the intersection between race and gender? That's a multiplicative intersection, right? 
So you might start with three racial categories and two gender categories, but you end up with six intersectional categories, and then you're just getting started. How many genders? Hypothetically, there's an infinite number. What about racial groupings? You're going to include ethnicity? You want to add class to that? You want to add socioeconomic class? How about attractiveness? And every time you add another category to the, to the singular entities, you increase the multiplicative ent entities in a multiplicative fashion. What are you going to do? You're going to equate across all those categories? Really? And, and, and across what dimensions? What are the dimensions of equality that you want to establish? It's just socioeconomic. Is it just salary? What about all the other ways that people are unequal? You're going to just stop with economic inequality, are you? It's like, it's a complete bloody catastrophe. It's an absolute mess. And intersectionality, the, the discovery of intersectionality on the left is actually the radical left's discovery of the fundamental flaw in their identity politics ideology. Groups can be multiplied without limit. Okay, that's not a problem. That's a fatal flaw. And they've already discovered it. They just haven't figured it out. The reason that the West privileges the individual is because we figured out 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, that you can fractionate group identity appropriately right down to the level of the individual.